Okay, I got a couple of things in the mail this week and I just wanted to document uh, the uh, unboxing of them and then we'll see what we got. This one right here is supposed to be a audio amplifier from the 60s, uh, early 60s, made by a company that went out of business, I think in the 70s. Uh, uh, they go by VM, but it stood for Voice of Music. And uh, they were around in the, in the golden age of radio and phonographs and everything, uh, 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, 60s, so uh, oh, this thing's really well packed. So you can see here, he's got this thing bubble wrapped really good. Let's see if you can raise this up. Got this thing bubble wrapped really good. Lots of bubble wrap. And then he's got this, looks like filter material. So that's good. He's got the tubes uh, in a separate box, looks like, maybe two separate boxes. We'll open those up here in a minute. And here's the chassis. Nice box too. It's a double, it's a double walled box. All right, let's see what we got here. This came out of a console um, phonograph. It had a uh, phonograph uh, AM/FM uh, receiver. Um, something else it seems like. Maybe an 8-track player. So we have here some uh, 6 BQ5s, which are EL64s. That's EL84s, not EL64s. These are the power tubes. Uh, two for each channel. So um, this is a, a two-channel stereo amplifier um, and then it's got two power tubes per in a push-pull configuration all right and then the other tubes here he did a really good packing job on this I love it when people pack this well very good okay this looks like the rectifier tube okay so we got a 5u4 GB rectifier tube, and then we have two uh, 12AX7s, it looks like. So, originally, I'll put this up here where you can see it a little bit better. This thing's had some modifications done to it. Let's zoom in here a little bit so I can show you. So originally, it was uh, the power tubes and for each channel in these two slots, and then got its own uh, output transformers. Uh, this right here was the uh, uh, phase inverter, and then there was a separate. And then right here is for the rectifier. There was a separate um, um, chassis for the preamp. Okay, but I think what it, what they've done, and I'll have to look at this, but what I think has happened here is they've actually put an onboard, you can see this, um, this uh, tube socket right here is a different color. This wasn't originally there uh, on this, uh, this is a model 236 or 20036. And they started this uh, numbering with the 200 series in the early 60s. Everything prior to that was uh, four digits or three digits before that. Uh, so that dates this thing to about the early 60s. But anyway, I'll, I'll look at the wiring on this. I've got, I found the, um, I found a site on the internet that actually deals in these VM amplifiers and they were uh, uh, 
uh, so kind as to send me a schematic for this. So I'm going to look at look at the schematic and, and find out um, what they've done to this thing as modification. So, uh, but it's got a can cap here, a can cap here, big power transformer, and you can see the uh, RCA uh, jacks for the uh, input. It's got an on-off switch here that wasn't normally here. Um, this socket right here would have been uh, a socket that powered the uh, the preamp. And then there's, there's a socket right over here that uh, went out to something else. So we'll just uh, take this thing. This is going to go, uh, this is going to be the amplifier for my uh, phonograph, though, when I get it all, all, all put together. You can see that they put these banana jacks on here. Uh, this would have had some other type of, uh, what you can see here, <clears throat> the outputs that it had here for the, uh, the old outputs right here and right here. So this is great. It's already been converted. So I'm really anxious. Somebody's already put a three prong uh, cord on there. So I'll have to look in there to see if that's all done right. Let me tip this up and see if we can see underneath it. Look at there. Somebody's already recapped it. Well, it looks like. Uh, it looks like one of the electrolytics here has been uh, replaced. Uh, the can caps are still connected, so that hasn't been done. You got your balance pots on both sides to balance your two output tubes. Um, but that's that. So uh, one of the things I may end up doing, if that is the case, that this is they are using that uh, extra, their extra, which is looking at it right now. I. I I can see that's what it looks like they're doing because the inputs come right into that tube first. Uh, so if that's the case, I may actually put a volume on this thing uh, so that I'll have a way of controlling my phonograph going into it. So, um, All right, well, that's that one. So let's get the other one out. Okay, now for this one. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys seen the uh, Uncle Doug episode where he uh, found a old Art Deco amplifier um, on eBay and they were wanting like $800 for it, seven or eight hundred dollars And so now he's building one of his own. Well, uh, I was on eBay looking and I found that one uh, that he was talking about. But then I ran across this thing. It's made by the same manufacturer company called um, uh, Thorderson or Thordarson, however, however you want to pronounce it. Don't know much about the company, really didn't research it. Going back to that uh, VEM back, uh, that we just took a look at, the, the Voice of Music, those were actually made in, uh, in Michigan. So uh, anyway, these, this thing right here supposedly has been converted into, it looks like he's got a box packed in a box, so that's good. So, he's got one box. Let me get this out of here. He's got one box, newspaper all around it, packed in another, another box. Let's get this box out of the way. So we got this box. This thing's this thing's pretty big. The chassis on it's pretty big. Okay. So I guess he had, he had mentioned in his uh, thing that he had found one of these knobs, one of these old uh, tan chicken head knobs with the T on it for Thor for Thorderson. So I guess he had found one on the internet and he had bought it. So I got that. And I think there's still one that's missing though. We'll see. It sounds like he left the tubes in it. We'll see. Well, that's what it looks like. Oh yeah. 
Okay. So yeah, you can see that uh, a couple of those chicken heads were, were uh, let me zoom this in here. You can see a couple of those chicken heads were uh, missing. So I got one of them and then don't know if that one's original or not. It doesn't have the T on there like these do. But we have a mic one, mic two, phono, bass, and treble. And uh, it's got this little record player up here on top of it. Pilot light, on off switch up here. Okay, still got the two prong cord. Still got the two prong cord here. So, I'll have to do something with that. Don't think this phono works, probably not. Yeah, so all that's probably going to be, all that's going to come off. <laughs> I didn't buy it for that part anyway. So let's turn this thing around and look at it. All right, so we have, it says Thurston Amplifier. Model, can't really read it. Model, well, maybe you guys can read it. And it's got a voltage selector switch, a couple of outputs, some inputs. This is for the phonograph right here. So what I'm thinking is this thing wasn't originally a phonograph. Um, somebody put this on top and turned it into a photograph. I think it was just an amplifier before and somebody turned it into a phonograph uh, an all-in-one kind of unit because it's got this phono inputs here for an external photograph and these wires are just running right up here through these little holes and I'm almost certain it wasn't manufactured that way so this has been converted but notice the Art Deco uh, looks around the, the edges here got little handles it's really nice because this thing this thing is pretty heavy let me turn this thing around handles got the art deco look to it it looks really nice looks really nice now uh, luckily this panel on top I may be able to uh, do something with that to fix this hole that's going to be left when I, when I take this off we'll see let me take this apart so you can take a look at the back okay so this is what we got inside uh, this uh, 5x4 rectifier tube was just sitting in there dangling so maybe to go back in there hopefully it tests out alright um, unless I'm gonna have to find another one of those these are all original Sylvania tubes you got your 5881's which is basically 6L6's um, you got a couple of um, Sylvania 6SJ7's here. Now this one may not be original. This is a 6SJ7, but it's a, I believe it's a national. Let's see here. Let's see what it says. A national union. So I've never even heard of that tube. Um, but it is another 6SJ7. Uh, and then over here, I think we have our 6N7. Uh, Another, that's an RCA tube. Uh, okay. So, typically you find, that, you know, that the, these manufacturers uh, use the same brand of tubes, but that's not always the case. So, um, I'm going to have to do some research on that tube, but that one right there looks like it was probably put in there later. Um, so here's a little bit about the data plate here. I don't know if you, got, you guys saw that earlier, I guess. Illinois manufacturer. All right, so both of these things that I got today are uh, kind of uh, Midwest. Uh, one, uh, uh, Illinois, and maybe that uh, voice of uh, music was made in Minnesota. Um, I'll have to check on it. It's either Minnesota or Michigan, but either way. Uh, really nice construction. You can see where the handles are here. 
Got the pots. I don't know if you'll be able to get a date on those. Maybe not. I'll have to go in there with my little magnifying glass and look at them. And then, uh, got the old original capacitors. Looks like you probably got the death cap right here. That's going to come out. Power switch. Two prong ungrounded cord. And then to get to the bottom of this, where, where all the components are, you have to take another plate off the bottom. So let's look at that. Okay, so as you can see here, we have some very old capacitors, some old plastic and wax, or paper and wax capacitors. Maybe some paper and oil. Um, just some really old stuff here, old wire, everything's cloth, cloth wired. Uh, we have the slide, uh, slide resistors here. Um, it's probably for the bias circuit. I have to look at that. But yeah, we're looking at some good bones here with you know six L two six L six power tubes. This thing's gonna rock. So uh, I'm gonna gut this thing. Capacitor wise, make sure the power transformer is good. The output transformer is good. All the resistor values check out okay, and then on a on a, a future video, we'll uh, we'll we'll test this thing out. Um, I may bring this thing up on a Variac just the way it is and, and kind of see what it looks what it looks like on the on the Variac. It doesn't look like these caps are really exploded or anything so we may look at it and uh, I'll see I'll definitely I'm definitely gonna change them out though eventually but uh, we'll see what they what they got here and uh, but yeah this thing's gonna be awesome I think I got an excellent deal on it and, uh, I didn't let's put it this way I didn't spend anywhere near the seven hundred dollars that they were wanting for that other one and it's basically the same kind of design, whereas that other one was kind of, you know, flattened off on one side and curved around and, or curved around on one side and flat on the other. This one's more of a symmetrical uh, example. And uh, this would have been used as a kind of a, like a PA, I guess, you know, someplace. Plug in a couple of microphones and a, and a phonograph, uh, and then somebody just decided they were just going to put their own photograph on here so they didn't have to lug around another one. So um, that's what we got. Uh, more than likely, turning this thing into a guitar amp. I don't want to mess too much with this this face here. Uh, I don't think that would be too healthy for it as far as aesthetics or anything. So we're probably going to put the input jacks and everything in the back. But. Uh, Look forward to working on this, along with all the other projects that I'm working on. I know you guys out there are like, are you ever going to finish a project? Uh, yes, I, I'm working on a bunch of them simultaneously as I get parts and everything like that. I Slowly but surely, I'm working on these things. And then sometimes I actually do things and I don't film it. And then I'm like, oh man, I, I did all this, I didn't film it. And then, anyway. But this is definitely, I'm really definitely going to document all the way through what I do with this one. And uh, we're gonna just uh, just just look out for the Thor Darson um, amplifier on uh, my channel.